amigos! As many of you know, Eat Your Spanish depends entirely on the support we receive from our Patreon supporters. And while we're still a ways away from the show being able to fully support itself and the time it takes to make, we thought we'd offer another fun incentive to join. Evan and I were talking, and we decided that if we were able to grow our Patreon familia to 250 supporters, then we could start hosting a live virtual performance every month for our supporters. So if you've been listening and you're having fun singing and playing games and listening to stories with us, please visit us at www.patreon.com forward slash eat your Spanish and help us keep the show going. And if we hit our goal of 250 supporters, then we'll be able to see each other once a month for a fun virtual performance and Spanish hangout. We're even thinking about hosting some art classes for some of the other months. There are just so many possibilities for ways that we can have fun together. So if you have the time and an extra $2 per month to spare, please visit us at www.patreon.com forward slash eat your Spanish and check out all of the additional learning materials and content available to our supporters. Thanks for your consideration and for being such great listeners. Hasta luego, amigos. Hello, friends. Hola, amigos. How are you? Como están? I'm so happy. Estoy feliz. To be with you. A estar contigo. Are you hungry? Tienen hambre. To sing and play. A cantar y jugar. Cause on our menu. Porque en el menu. It's finished today. Everybody sing. No, I said Spanish. Okay, eat your Spanish with us today. Eat your Spanish! With Evan and Vanessa. Hola amigos, and welcome to Eat Your Spanish. On today's episode, we're going to be sharing with you one of several stories that we wrote for some of our Patreon subscribers. We hope you all enjoy. Today's story is called... Valentina y el colibrí. Un día, Valentina was sitting in her room when suddenly a tiny, beautiful, rainbow-colored bird appeared at her window. She looked at it and smiled, and then much to her surprise, it said, Hola, Valentina, vamos a visitar a tu familia. She knew right away that there was some sort of magic happening, because although she had heard and practiced some Spanish, she was still learning. But when this beautiful bird spoke to her in Spanish, she immediately knew what it was saying. The little bird was asking her to come along with her to go visit her family. Valentina was excited at the thought of visiting her family. She is so lucky to have family both in Guatemala and Peru, and she had always wanted to visit. But then, she felt a little sad when she realized that there was one little problem. She couldn't fly like her new rainbow friend. But I can't fly, she tried to say, but instead, the words came out in Spanish. Pero yo no puedo volar. The little bird chirped a little laugh and said, Don't worry, no te preocupes, yo te ayudo, I will help you. Before Valentina knew it, her toes were hovering above the ground, and right before her eyes, beautiful rainbow-colored threads were dancing around her and weaving themselves into an intricate wipil and matching corte. As the threads swirled in their beautiful patterns, she saw a little hummingbird appear in the weaving. Look, mira, said Valentina. It looks just like you. Se parece mucho a ti. Eso es porque esa colibrí es de mi gran, 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 gran abuela. That's because it's a picture of my great, 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 great grandmother. Colibrí como yo son muy importante en la cultura maya. Hummingbirds like me are very important in Mayan culture. Nuestro trabajo es llevar los sentimientos, sueños y deseos de una persona a otra. It's our job to carry people's dreams, wishes, and feelings back and forth to share with one another. Wow, que increíble! Wow, that's incredible, said Valentina. 
Just then, she looked down and saw that the beautiful, intricate story was finished being woven onto her huipil, or special Guatemalan blouse, and that her matching corte, or special Guatemalan skirt, was also finished. It fit her very well, and she felt her spirit soar and swirl when she looked down at the beauty and history that filled the threads. She looked up at the wonderful jeweled rainbow bird and asked, ¿Cómo te llamas? What's your name? The bird chirped, Me llamo Arcoiris. My name is Rainbow. Follow me. And with that, they soared out through her bedroom window, and soon they were high above the beautiful clouds and away from the busy world below. Arcoiris the colibri looked at Valentina and asked her who she would like to share her wishes and thoughts and love with first. She quickly replied, Mi gran tía Gloria Esperanza y mi gran tío Julio. My great aunt Gloria Esperanza and my great uncle Julio. At first they hovered in the air and nothing happened. Hmm, said Arcoiris the colibri. Valentina, cierra tus ojos por favor. Y imagina un tiempo muy feliz con tu familia en Guatemala. Valentina, please try closing your eyes and imagining a really nice time with your family in Guatemala. Valentina closed her eyes and felt her heart fill with warm, loving memories that she didn't even know she had. It was Christmas time in Guatemala and the room was filled with people. The smell of jamón, pan dulce, and tamales filled the air and made her mouth water. As she looked around, she saw great tía Gloria Esperanza y tío Julio, along with lots of other people wearing their best huipiles and cortes, while some people wore vibrant chaquetas y pantalones made from beautiful, hand-woven and hand-dyed wool and cotton. Although she hadn't met some of her family members who laughed and ate and hugged each other all around her, she felt comfortable and safe and warm with them and their familiar easy smiles, just the way she felt in her own home. So many of her younger cousins were playing and laughing together. Some people were playing beautiful marimba music and dancing together. She could see a young girl with a beautiful corte and intricate huipil, just like hers, serving pan dulce to her tios y tías y primos. As she watched, she soon started recognizing some other people from her home. First she saw her mamá and papá, then her gran abuela Hilda, both of her abuelas Blanca y Annie, her abuelos Pedro y Adrián, and her tíos Adrián and Jeremy, and her tía Vicky with her new baby Primita. They were sitting down all together with her gran tía Esperanza and her gran tío Julio. They each had a steaming cup of café con leche and a great big square-shaped delicious smelling pork tamale wrapped in a nice green banana leaf. She was so happy to have all of her family together to celebrate Christmas. Her heart felt full to the brim. The smells all around her made her realize how hungry she was. After all, she still hadn't even eaten breakfast. So she walked into the kitchen to see if there was anything to eat. Right on the table was a big, beautiful dish of plátano frito con freoles negros, or fried plantains with black beans, with a note next to it that said, Para Valentina, disfruta tu desayuno. For Valentina, enjoy your breakfast. There was a little heart at the bottom, and even though she didn't know who it was from, she had a feeling her amigo Arcoiris the Colibri had something to do with this. She sat down and looked out the kitchen window at the rolling crops of mazorcas, or corn, that bordered the lovely hogar that Tia Esperanza lives in. She thought how wonderful it must be to wake up on a mountain with beautiful greenery everywhere. She heard the sweet chirping of her colibri friend, Arcoiris. She watched as he zoomed through the enormous leaves of a happy banana tree, through a towering bougainvillea that was pouring its blossoms over the fence. Arcoiris the colibri had landed right by the kitchen window, near the sink, on a delicate, whimsical pink and purple flower. On the other side of the window, hanging from an intricately embroidered planter, was the most beautiful flowering fuchsia plant, and mysteriously, an idea came to her that those beautiful flowers were known as aretes, or earrings, in South America. Hola, arcoiris! She shouted to her friend as she watched him dip his beak into one of the nectar-filled blossoms. Hemos disfrutado mucho a Totonicapan. Es uno de las ciudades más lindas en Guatemala. 
pero hay muchas personas esperándote. ¡Vamos, amiguita! We've really enjoyed it here in Totonicapan. It's one of the most beautiful cities in Guatemala, but there are more people waiting for you. Let's go, my friend. And with that, Arcoiri zoomed in through the side door of the house and landed right on Valentina's head. Suddenly, she felt a funny tickle by her feet and noticed that her shoes were changing right before her very eyes. They were turning into rubber-soled sandals with a strap across her foot and behind her ankle. Yankees! I like your Yankees, said Arcoiris the Colibri. ¿Qué es eso? What's that? Valentina asked. Arcoiris laughed a trippy laugh and explained that Yankees are special shoes made from recycled truck tires that many people in Peru wear. Now she felt her clothes changing as well. She looked down and her corte was turning into several multicolored polleras, which were embroidered with flowers all around the edges. Just when she thought it was complete, another appeared on top of it. They kept appearing in layers that made them puff out all around her. She felt like a living rainbow, and it made her so happy and full of love. She also noticed a beautiful yikya, which is a special multicolored Peruvian shawl that appeared around her shoulders and fastened itself around her neck with a pin that was in the shape of a little colibri, or hummingbird. Before she could blink, she was above the clouds again. This time, they were flying over the Andes Mountains and Machu Picchu, where there were tourists climbing, natives guiding, and llamas grazing. Just when Valentina was about to ask Arcoiris where they were going, he chirped, Ya casi llegamos! We're almost there! And she felt a tickle in her belly as they quickly soared down towards the ground, right past a road sign that said, Bienvenidos a Chiclayo, Peru! Or welcome to Chiclayo, Peru on it. They kept flying down and down and down through the beautiful tropical canopy and right into a vibrant, lush garden. Out in the jardín, she recognized some of her tías y tíos, along with her gran abuelita Norma and gran abuelo Salvador. Her gran tíos Janet and Jorge were also there. Her tías Nancy and Judith and tío Salvador, Donald, Ronald, and Robin were also there. There were lots of chairs set up and two people dancing a beautiful dance. The woman was barefoot and she had a long, black, full skirt that flipped and twirled in slow motion as she moved. She had on a beautiful embroidered white blouse that fit her snugly. She floated elegantly around her dance partner while a colorfully embroidered handkerchief waved in her hand like a butterfly's wing. Valentina thought that she looked strong and sure, but also like she was free and really happy to be dancing. She looked like someone who had been filled with the magic and colors and openness of the big mountains all around them. Valentina knew right then that she would learn how to dance the marinera one day. She knew she wanted to feel the kind of freedom that only dancing from your soul can bring to you. Just then, her gran abuelita Norma spotted her and said, Hola, mi amor! and welcomed Valentina with a big abrazo fuerte, or big hug. Then she asked her to come over with her so she could watch her dance along with her primas and primos while they enjoyed the beautiful danza de marinera. After they watched and danced and hugged, they were all very hungry, so they filed into the casa and were so happy to see all of her favorite foods lining the table. Valentina filled her plate with ceviche and lomo saltado and watched as the grown-ups filled their cups with chicha. It seemed to her that their cheeks looked a little pinker than before and that their smiles, which already seemed impossibly big and warm, had somehow grown even warmer and wider. For dessert, Gran Abuelita Norma passed around alfajores, with creamy dulce de leche in the middle and powdered sugar on the outside. They enjoyed these together as they listened to some beautiful music played by her tías on el cajón y la guitarra. Valentina sat with her great-grandfather Salvador and her abuelito Adrián. As she hugged them, she thanked them for always looking after her. Valentina also met her great-grandmother Aura for the first time. She embraced her warmly as if she'd known her all her life. Gracias, familia, tú and mi corazón. She held hands with her grandma Annie and her great-grandma Hilda as she prepared to return home. With a belly full of food and a crackling fire behind her, Valentina listened to the Peruvian music and it took her back to the coziest spot in her heart that felt just like home. 
she thought it was nice to know that this was the same feeling she had at her Tia Esperanza's house in Guatemala. She realized at that moment that home was a place for her, but it was also a special feeling that she could keep in a little treasure chest in her heart, and that if she ever felt scared or lonely or sad, she could open up that special feeling in her heart and live in its sweetness for a while. This made her very comforted and happy. As she was thinking these cradling thoughts, she realized she was getting very sleepy. Just when she was about to call for Arcoides, he appeared, and without a word, he wrapped his rainbow wings around her, and somehow she fit perfectly. Before she could even thank him or hug him, she was back in her home, in her very own room, and everything was just as she had left it, except now, Right by her pillow were two muñecas, or dolls. One was wearing the very same huipil and cortes that she had worn in Guatemala, and the other was wearing the polleras and yiquia that she had worn in Peru. She hugged them closely, knowing that even though some of her familia lived far away, there was a little piece of all of her hogares there in the deepest treasures of her heart. <laughs> 